Hi, a very good morning. I am Lakshmi Narayana Gunta, PGT in Zoology at APMS and Junior College Garvanja and also working as NEET Super 60 Zoology faculty at Dupalwalsa Srikakaram. Today, we are going to discuss the excretory products and their elimination part 1. Under this part, we are going to discuss the different modes of excretion and the different excretory organs in animals. Animals they accumulate uric acid, urea, ammonia, water and also ions like sodium, potassium, chloride ions, phosphates, sulfates etc. All these they are accumulated because of the metabolic activities or by other means like excess ingestion. And these substances which are accumulated in our body they have to be eliminated time to time and this process of separation and elimination of the nitrogenous waste products and other waste products from our body is called as excretion and these kidneys they are the main excretory organs in our body and based on the type of nitrogenous waste product excreted the animals they are grouped into the ammonotelic animals, the ureotelic animals, the urcotelic animals. Ammonotelic animals are those animals which excrete ammonia as their chief nitrogenous waste product. Whereas ureotelic animals are those animals excrete urea as their chief nitrogenous waste product. Whereas the animals excreting uric acid as their chief nitrogenous waste product they are called as urocotelic animals and in addition to this animals they may excrete amino acids hippuric acid guanine allantoin etc if the animal excretes guanine it is called as guanotelic animal if they excrete amino acids they are called as aminotelic animal this way there are number of other products but Majority of the animals they excrete these three only. Okay, let us now discuss one by one the ammonotelic animals. The process of excretion of ammonia is called as ammonotelism, and those animals excreting ammonia are called as ammonotelic animals. This is the structure of ammonia NH3. How this ammonia is formed? This ammonia is formed by the oxidative deamination of amino acids amino means nh2 these amino group of amino acids that is nh2 it combines with hydrogen ions and it is formed into ammonia this ammonia is highly soluble in water and very toxic to our body very toxic one this ammonia it is excreted by the process of diffusion through gill surfaces or uh, body surfaces okay as this ammonia is excreted by the process of diffusion, the kidneys they have no significant role in this process of excretion. The ammonotelic animals are mostly aquatic animals. A for aquatic, remember? A for aquatic. As ammonia is highly soluble in water and it is highly toxic, this needs a lot of water to excrete that's why it is almost difficult for terrestrial animals or other animals the animals ex excreting ammonia are called as ammonotelic animals the examples for this um, these ammonotelic animals includes aquatic amphibians aquatic insects and also the bony fishes they all excrete ammonia as more amount of water is available for them okay that's why they excrete ammonia a for aquatic okay coming to the next mode of excretion that is ureotelism the process of elimination or excretion of urea as the chief nitrogenous waste product is called as ureotelism and those animals excreting urea are called as ureotelic animals this is the structure of urea and this urea is less toxic than ammonia it is nearly one lakh times lesser toxic than ammonia this ureotelism is exhibited by many terrestrial animals then how this urea is formed in our body as we know the amino group in the amino acid it combines with hydrogen and forms into ammonia this is common in our body also but 
in our body ammonia is formed but this ammonia it is again converted into urea in the liver and this ammonia it combines with carbon dioxide and converted into urea in the liver of our body and this urea it is sent into the blood and there in the kidneys this urea is filtered and excreted by our kidneys okay and some animals like uh, sharks and other cartilaginous fishes they retain this urea in their body in order to maintain isotonicity with the sea water okay this process is called as physiological uremia physiological uremia and the animals excreting urea are called as ureotelic animals the examples for these ureotelic animals are all mammals they are ureotelic that is they excrete urea as their chief nitrogenous waste product and terrestrial amphibians they also excrete urea as they lead most of their life on land and similarly cartilaginous fishes they also exhibit ureotelism and along with these uh, the earthworms they also exhibit ureotelism okay coming to the next mode of excretion that is urocotelism urocotelism is the process of excretion of uric acid and those animals excreting uric acid they are called as urocotelic animals and this is the structure of uric acid okay this uric acid it is less toxic than both urea and ammonia and unlike that of ammonia it is almost insoluble in water as it is insoluble in water it is excreted in the form of pellets small pellets are a semi solid paste we have we might have seen uh, the excreta of uh, birds which contain small small pellets those are nothing but the crystals uric acid crystals okay and let us see the animals excreting this uric acid mostly they include the birds tracheid arthropods reptiles land snails etc okay you can simply remember bird b i r d bird b for birds i for insects r for reptiles d for desert animals these are all the urocotelic animals the birds they excrete uric acid the tracheid arthropods mostly they include insects millipedes centipedes these are all tracheid arthropods and also reptiles snakes lizards all these also they excrete uric acid along with land snails also they excrete uric acid as their chief nitrogenous waste product okay na okay these are the examples for urocotelism coming to the next sub topic that is the excretory organs okay these excretory organs they are the most simple and tubular structures in invertebrates like this one the clean cells which we can see in uh, platyhelminth the protonephridia loaded with clean cells okay whereas in humans and other vertebrates these excretory organs they are complex and tubular structures mostly they are kidneys okay na the protozoans porphyrins ciliates they don't have any special excretory organs in their body simply they excrete their uh, nitrogenous waste products particularly mostly ammonia into water by the process of diffusion through their body surface into the water coming to the next phylum platyhelminthes they show these protonephridia the protonephridium is a network of dead end tubules where uh, we can observe clean cells why they are called as clean cells because you can here clearly observe it is looking like a flame a flame okay this is a dead end tubule it collects the nitrogenous waste products from the body and the, the process of collection takes place through these cilia these cilia they open into the tubule these protonephridia they are found in platyhelminthes rotifers and larvae of annelids and also the larvae of molluscans rotifers these rotifers they are also called as wheel animal cules wheel animal cules and the larvae of annelids uh, one example of that larva is tro trochophore larva trochophore larva and larva of molluscans 
uh, Velizer, example is Velizer. Velizer is the most important larva in molluscans. Okay. And coming to the next type of excretory organ that is metanephridia. These metanephridia, they are the tubular excretory structures which are immersed in the serotonic fluid. Here you can observe the metanephridium. These metanephridia, they are observed in earthworms. That one is metanephridia. I will zoom it. Okay. The, here you can clearly observe the metanephridium. These metanephridia are found in most annelids uh, such as earthworms. Okay. These metanephridia are the excretory organs in annelids. After annelids, arthropoda. Arthropods, they show malfusion tubules. These malfusion tubules, they are the blind uh, tubular structures floating in the hemolymph and opening into the digestive tract. Here you can observe there are 120 to 150 malfusion tubules in a cockroach. Okay, these malfusion tubules they are at the junction of mesentera and hindgut, and these malfusion tubules they are floating in the hemolymph and they collect the nitrogenous waste products and similarly they pour these nitrogenous waste product into the hindgut. It is a mode of terrestrial adaptation. These malfusion tubules are found in insects and other terrestrial arthropods. Those arthropods leading their life on land. Okay. Coming to the next type of excretory organs, the antennary glands or green glands which are observed in arthropods like crustaceans. These green glands, they are paired structures. They lie at the base of the antenna and open into the exterior. Here, you can observe the antenary glands. These antenary glands are found in crustaceans. They are present at the base of the antenna. Antenary glands or green glands, they collect the nitrogenous waste products from the hemolymph and in turn, they send it out at the base of the antenna. Coming to the next type of excretory organs are the coxal glands. These are the excretory structures found in arachnids, scorpions and spiders. This is a coxal gland and this is the structure of coxal gland. This one is the bladder, the tubule and the labyrinth and the secu. These are all the parts in a coxal gland. And coming to the most important excretory organ that is kidneys. Kidneys are the excretory structures found in cardates and we will discuss in detail about these kidneys in our next class. Okay, let us recap all the excretory organs uh, phylum wise. In protozoans, oriferans and sealant rates, there are no specialized excretory organs. The nitrogenous waste products, they are sent out through the body surface by the process of diffusion. Main ex nitrogenous waste products of these invertebrates is ammonia. Okay. And coming to the plant element is the excretory structures are protonephridia loaded with flame cells. Ask element is the renate cells. The H-shaped renate cells are the excretory structures. Annelids, metanephridia, molluscans, argon of bojanus. Most important, argon of bojanus is the excretory argon pila globosa and the unio, the freshwater muscle. Keeper's organ is the excretory organ of unio. Arthropods, they show the malfusion tubules, green glands, coxal glands, all these are the excretory organs in arthropods. Echinodermates, the two feet uh, dermal branchiae are the excretory organs in echinodermates. They excrete ammonia, whereas the starfishes, they excrete amino acids. Okay. The excretory organs in hemicordates is Glomerulus. The excretory organs of urocardates is neural gland. The excretory organs of cephalocardates are pharyngeal nephridia and the excretory organs of vertebrates are kidneys. Okay. Let us recap this session with a few questions. The first one is chief excretory product of terrestrial snails is uric acid, ammonia, urea and the amino acids. What is your option? Right. Uric acid is the right option. The chief excretory product of terrestrial snails is uric acid. Coming to the next question, where does ammonia combine with carbon dioxide and forms urea? Okay, the options are renal, pelvis, nephron, kidney and the liver. What is your option? Right, liver is the 
right option where the ammonia it combines with carbon dioxide and it is converted into urea by ornithine cycle okay coming to the last question least toxic form of excretory product is ammonia urea creatine phosphate and the uric acid what is your option right uric acid is the right option thank you for watching and follow me on youtube simply by typing lakshmi narayana gunta okay thank you and don't forget to subscribe my channel